G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and the Savo, we're going to harvest some cucumbers and then I'm going to pickle them. All in the one video. How fantastic is that? I tell you what, these cucumbers are growing like nuts. I can't hardly keep up with them. They're just going crazy. Every day it seems like I have to pick a whole bunch of them. It's, it, look, fair income, it was only about two or three days ago, it felt like I picked every cucumber I could see, even little. Pickled them in a jar, came out today, pickles everywhere. So it looks like I'm going to have to do it all again. I'm going to take you guys with me. Rightio, come on, let's do some picking. Now I've got a whole bunch of different types of cucumbers. Lebanese, little bush ones, one that's called a Aussie hero or something like that be some cross, a burpless ones, but you know, honestly, I don't really care. As long as I harvest them small, for two reasons. One is because they're best pickled small like this. You can pickle them larger and cut them up into slices. That's good, but they get a little bit watery and soggy when you pickle them. They're still not bad though. I can make a good dip out of a large pickled cucumber, but the small ones are best to eat crunchy whole like this. And the other reason is if I pick them smaller, the fruit fly in this area, they don't tend to hit them uh, when they're young. So that's another good bonus. Otherwise, if they get a bit older, fruit fly can sting them. The larva doesn't always develop like a little maggot inside. It doesn't always develop in, in cucumbers, but it can ruin the fruit. So it's always best all around to pick them young. I like to keep picking cucumbers. It makes the plants produce more through, you know, two or three months of the season. And I also think it takes the pressure off the plants if you're picking them, especially in these really hot days. Today was a stinker. It was nearly 40 degrees Celsius. And if you leave the fruit laden on these, these bushes, I have a feeling that it really um, labors the plant trying to maintain such a, a large fruit. I don't know if that's correct, but I mean, you really do need to check regularly, otherwise they can get away from you. Like this one here, you know, she's passed about 10 centimeters long, starting to get about 12, 15 centimeters long. Um, starting to get too big to pickle, you know, in the old fashioned, normal lacto way, you know. But anyway, I can use that in salads and, and something else. Of course, it goes without saying, if you're going to grow cucumbers and you're going to pickle them, well, grow some dill at the same time. They grow well together. They grow at the same season. So yeah, might as well pop some dill in so that you've got that wonderful fresh herb to add to the pickling mix. I just use the scissors. It's the easiest way. Cut them off at the stem. All right, in this bed here, I've got a really, well, I think is a nice setup. I've got the cucumbers in the middle growing up this steel trellis here, which I've put some irrigation piping around the top. And the, the cucumbers growing up this and then down. This is nearly a meter off the ground, nearly you know a yard off the ground, this raised bed. And it's growing down and towering and, and tumbling over. Then around it, I've got banana capsicums four banana capsicums that also can be supported by this center trellis and they grow really well with the cucumbers because in this heat uh, capsicums uh, and chilies really like the heat really like to grow through summer but cucumbers of course they tend to wilt in the middle of the day so these plants give a little bit of extra shade to the cucumbers and then right around the outside of this bed right around the edge I've also planted some dwarf beans and they're going to flop over and tumble down and uh, yeah there's a lot you can grow in such a small bed like this cucumbers capsicums and beans it's really working well together in this particular one i've left a few go really large and go yellow because I want the seed. 
that's why I'm letting a few of them ripen fully. What I'll do is I'll bring you around the other side so you can have a look from that other angle. So we've got the capsicums there giving it a bit of shade again, just like the other bed. I've got a small chili plant in here. Um, that's just some type of sweet chili. It's quite nice, um, not, not hot at all. And then you've got the cucumbers tumbling over the bed like this. How I prepare my cucumber beds is pretty simple. All I do is add a good amount of compost to the top of the soil. You've got to have nice, good, wormy, microbe soil as well. Helps to grow great crops like this with no matter what vegetable you grow. But, um, you know, good friable soil, plenty of organic matter in it, and I add a good layer of compost before I start planting them in. Fresh compost from my compost heap. Then after that, I will throw and scatter a little bit of blood and bone around uh, a blood and bone fertiliser and maybe some of my own chicken manure or quail manure. Anything that I've got that's a, a good type of fertiliser, uh, usually an organic stuff. Maybe even an organic chicken pellet manure, if like, like um, the rooster booster that, I, that we can get here locally. It's an organic chicken pellet. Uh, I don't too much of that because you don't want a whole heap of leaf growth and no cucumbers. But um, that's why I like the blood and bone because it's got the, the potassium in it and uh, the, the potash and the, the, the also the nitrogen. So it's got a good blend and got a good mix. I just find it works well. And then on top of that, I will put it, in this case there's a loosen um, or a sugarcane mulch or wood chip or whatever, a nice thick mulch. And then I plant the cucumber seedlings in. Obviously I have some type of trellis that they grow on and that's about all. At about the halfway mark, so about a month or so into growing and you can see that they've got a good go on and they're starting to get their first fruit and they're flowering, I will give them another dress, top dress of, of some fertiliser. Whether it be a little bit of chicken manure around the base of the plant, uh, not on the stem, just around, you know, a few inches around from the base of the plant. Generally, I'll just sprinkle some blood and bone again, the organic commercial blood and bone. Sprinkle that around the base of the plant, water it in well. And speaking of water, uh, especially in these raised beds, although they are fairly good at holding water with the type of soil that I've got in, I still water cucumbers at this time of year every day. I really give them a lot of water because when they're producing fruit like this, they suck a lot of water out of the root system into the fruit and into the, these big leaves. So they do require a lot of water to keep them properly sustained, to keep these nice cucumbers good and crispy and, and not, not going bitter, which is important. So they're about, they're my main major tips for how I grow cucumbers anyway and get them to I mean, a pretty outstanding, if I do say so myself, crop like this just about every time I grow them. Some of these will be right on the verge. If they're sort of skinny, but fairly long, uh, they'll still, uh, still be okay to pickle. If they're getting too fat, then uh, they're over, but I'm not doing too bad here at the moment. Getting some good sized cucumbers just right for pickling. I mean, as you guys know, cucumbers are so versatile, you don't just have to pickle them, but you use them in everything. Like that one there, that's just too big. I'll slice that one up and we'll have it for a salad. All right, so there's all the picking done. What a fantastic harvest this is. Just check it out, guys. Oh my goodness. Most of them, or pretty well all of them, ah, except for, say, this one and another one, are all good size for pickling. So let's go inside and just uh, prepare that big crock for some pickling sensation.
All right, well that's that done. Finally, it's getting a bit late at night actually. It took me a little bit longer than I expected to pack all those cucumbers in that crock. But I'm pretty happy with how it went. Yeah, those three rows, see all those cucumbers. Packed them all in there nice and tight um, with a grape leaf and some homegrown garlic and some homegrown dill. Um, some mustard seed. I reckon I can smell it. It smells beautiful already But let that ferment for three to four weeks and it should be ready then those those Cucumbers in there will turn into pickled cucumbers. And they will be beautiful dill natural lacto fermented pickles You know not as tart and tangy uh, and vinegary as those as the ones you get in the shops they're more natural and uh, they have a natural sort of flavour about them. Uh, a more milder flavour but still a good sour hit. And uh, that's what makes homemade pickles just wondrous compared to the ones that you buy from the supermarket already in those jars and all heat treated and, and stuff. Yeah, looking forward to it. I'll sit it now on the kitchen bench here. Uh, and just let it do its thing. Once that's finished, I mean, I know in European countries in cooler climates, they'll just keep them in the big crock and take them out when they want them. Uh, here in Australia or in the subtropics, what I like to do is remove them, put them into smaller jars, put them in the fridge. That is the, uh, the way that's best kept and that way the fermentation process doesn't keep going they don't get too hot and don't go off they just uh, stay perfect in the fridge so there you go that's from picking the cucumbers talking about growing them and then packing them into a crock and lacto fermenting them you know what i was going to finish the video there but I thought it might be interesting if we just had a bit of a taste test on these cucumbers that I pickled on that day. That was the 3rd of December. I had marked it on the top of the lid here with a little sticky note. So it's now the 11th, so that makes it, what, eight days of fermentation. So not that long. Like I said, I usually wait about three to four weeks before I reckon they're ready. But sometimes, you know, the fermentation process can be a lot quicker depending on the temperature, it can maybe take just a number of days, three or four days, but generally it takes around two to four weeks. But anyway, let's have a taste of these pickles and see how it's going. Right, this has got a moat around it, a water moat. That's the airlock. Put that to the side. Let's just uh, take one side of this out. All right, immediately these floated up. They look pretty good. A little bit of white stuff on them, that's normal. It's pretty hard. Yeah, I can taste the garlic that permeates through it and also the dill. You know, it's quite pleasant already. I could eat this, no problem. Mmm, it's beautiful. I think, I think it's probably best left another week or two though. It's not gonna hurt it anyway, put it that way. But um, pickles are coming along lovely. I could take that out now and bottle them, I reckon. But I just think that they need a another week or two of maturing and they'll be fine. Mm. Excuse me. I think that finishes the video off nicely. A quick taste test and that's only after eight or nine days so I'm really happy the way that's going. Give me a big thumbs up if you like this video because that helps. Um, don't forget to share the video if you can and uh, also go to the website selfsufficientme.com. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.